Hello and welcome to the latest trials video from Bartholomew's. Today I'll be joined by Eloise Griffin-Hicks uh, and we'll be looking at our black grass trials from historical examples and also what we're doing for 2021 and hopefully give you some top tips on how to control black grass. So Eloise, we'll start off. Uh, what did we actually find in discovering our 2018 trials? Yeah, so our 2018 trials were relatively extensive. We looked at pre-emergent spray options, post-emergent spray options, and then we also looked at them in combination with the use of Avidex granules. So the take home messages that we got from 2018 was that Avidex granules always add an uplift to treatment control. Uh, that uplift depends on how weak or strong the spray program is. So the weaker the spray program, the more the Avidex uplifted the blackgrass control and the stronger the spray program, it would only add on one or two percent additional control. But that sort of level of control is still really useful in the fight against black grass. In terms of our pre-emergent sprays that worked really well, um, the two that really stood out to us were Crystal plus Hurricane that came out top with Avidex on top of that as, as a program. And then Liberator plus some generic PDM came out second. This was quite surprising to us though, because we were previously told that this black grass population was quite tough and the farmer had been having a really hard time of it. So when we came in with a pretty standard program and saw that we were getting levels of sort of 94% control from a spray, uh, we were really surprised. So I think the key with pre-emergent sprays would be down to timing. These sprays were applied 24 hours after drilling, which is your sort of optimum time. There was good levels of moisture in the seed bed, which means that the residual chemistry was able to stick and sit in the soil level as the black grass was emerging. And if you would like to see those trials results from 2018, you can use the links down in the description to find all of our charts. Now, what are we going to be doing differently for 2020 and 2021's trials? So the 2020 slash 2021 trial, It'll be fairly different. We'll have more spray treatments. Uh, we'll once again just be looking at pre-emergence treatments. Uh, this year we won't be looking at Avidex use because we feel we've done that extensively and the manufacturer has also got an awful lot of data on Avidex. So this year we've got 20 different pre-emergence treatments. Uh, we've got quite a lot of standard treatments just to see what's working best. We have new products from three manufacturers, including some new actives and some different formulations of current actives. So with all of our trials work going on, what are some of the top tips that we give farmers for black grass control? So black grass control has been you know, in the forefront of farmers and um, agronomist minds for the past sort of 20 years or so. So we've got some really good top tips for you. The most important takeaway is that to maintain a black grass population, you need to be getting 95% control. So that's not reducing the population. That is just the black grass population staying as it was the year previously. So to do this, Stephen Moss formulated his five steps to black grass success. So I'll just briefly go over those. And these are what we're thinking in terms of cultural controls, as well as chemical controls for black grass and how to minimise your own populations on farm. So the first thing that you can do for that is crop competition. So what we mean by that is choosing a competitive cultivar. Winter wheat and winter cereals are relatively uncompetitive when you compare them with a spring cultivar such as spring barley. So spring barley will be much more competitive than winter wheat and therefore will suppress more of the black grass that is chitted in the seed bed. So if you can use spring barley instead of winter wheat, I understand it's a rotational programme, but where you can put spring cereals in, uh, that is a very good thing to do. The next thing you can do is if you are going to have a winter cultivar, such as winter wheat, you can delay drilling. So this black grass trial in particular has been a very good delay drilling slot. So it was drilled on the 7th of November. This is because you can see there's um, black grass curves, so you can see where the black grass is germinating. The majority of the black grass will germinate in September. September is where you're normally wanting to drill a winter cereal. So if you can delay that by, by two weeks, you can reduce the population. So if you push it into the middle of October or the end of October, that will start reducing the populations for you. The next option you can do is 
Uh, try and have as many stale seed beds as possible between harvest and drilling. So for a spring cereal, you know, you can get as quite a few stale seed beds in. But if you can get two or three in between the harvest of your crop and then your winter drilling, that would be brilliant. And if you can squeeze an extra one in just to keep killing that chitted black grass seed, you'll keep on reducing your populations. And then further to this, uh, you've got rotational ploughing has also been proven to help reduce black grass populations. So this is ploughing one year in every five with the idea that when you plough one year in every five, you're burying all of the trash on the top down onto the bottom of the soil profile, um, sort of 10 centimetres deep. And then after five years, that black grass population, that seed uh, bank that's been buried, should hopefully now be dying and have less vigour after five years. So you're not just turning it over every year and getting the same population up every single year. Uh, another thing that can be done inside the crop is patch spraying. So if you've got a particularly bad area of black grass in the field, you can go through it with some glyphosate. Yes, it means that you lose part of the crop, but what it does mean is that you will also kill that black grass um, population there as well. So this is done hopefully before the black grass goes to ear and starts to set seed. Um, if it's set seed and it's drying out already, then you might as well leave it. And then there's also the option of hand roguing. It's tedious and it also costs a lot of money, but it is one of the most effective ways of getting on top of black grass populations in the growing season without losing any crop. And then the last thing is your herbicide selection which is what we're looking at here. The last thing that you should always reach for is the can of chemical. We're trying to do things in a cultural way, in a management style way, rather than just reaching for a herbicide, which is then going to start developing resistance in the black grass populations. So what we're hoping to do here in our black grass trial is discover which treatments are working best for us, what's coming in the next couple of years, sort of the next five years time, and seeing if there are things in the pipeline that will help as the final option to blackgrass control.